All right, hello YouTubers. Hey, uh, just wanted to uh, do a follow-up regarding the Brokock Sniper. Uh, I've gotten a number of comments uh, with people asking me where we at and how's the gun shooting and stuff like that. And so uh, I wanted to let everybody know exactly where I am and what's up. So first off is uh, the Brokock that I originally did uh, is no longer with me. I returned that to Airguns Arizona. I could not get it to shoot consistently. Um, and it just it didn't matter which pellet I used or what speed or power, it didn't really matter. The thing was not going to shoot consistently. And when I say, say when I say shoot consistently, I mean at 30 yards, uh, it wasn't holding an inch. Um, and then of course at 40 and 50, it was just getting worse. So I uh, sent it back a number of times. They worked on it, tried to make it better, but at the end of the day, it just wasn't going to make it. So um, came down to three choices, uh, you know, get my money back, a refund. Uh, they could rework it, you know, put in a new barrel or send me a new one. And that takes us into the next phase of this, which is uh, Brocock uh, Phantom Sniper Review Part 2. All right, so here it is, the Brocock Bantam Sniper Review Part 2. So uh, you get the box, of course, and then when you open it up, uh, inside will be the rifle. Um, they took some shots on mine before they sent it to me, so that's why there's a target in there. But uh, then you get your, uh, your warranty card along with your uh, manual. And then uh, one of the uh, comments or one of the questions that was left on my original review was, hey, does that thing come with a single uh, slide or a single shot um, slide? And uh, mine did not, the original one, uh, that was uh, like serial number 325 or something. But uh, this one did indeed come with a single shot tray so that's included. Um, it comes with uh, one magazine, uh, holds 10 shots. So um, that's in there. And then you have uh, two breech seals in case you should happen to uh, blow those out. And then it comes with the uh, Foster Quick Connect along with uh, directions on uh, how best to uh, put that all together on your uh, tank and all that other stuff. So that's what it comes with. And then of course the sniper itself is uh, in the box. And then I already have my uh, my scope put on it. So let's take it out of the box and uh, look at it a little closer. All right. So here it is. Um, again, it has the uh, adjustable uh, butt plate. Just uh, unscrew it and it'll move up and down. Um, you have the adjustable uh, cheek piece on the stock. And then you have the uh, bolt itself for, for uh, loading uh, the pellets themselves. And then uh, a significant change is uh, from generation one to generation two, as I was told, is the power adjustment. Uh, on the uh, old one that I had, the power adjustment actually had uh, six uh, different clicks, and this one only has four. You have four, three, two, one. I uh, emailed Airguns Arizona to find out if that was uh, right for this, or you know, did they have something screw up again or something? And they said no, that was the Generation Two uh, update. Uh, they said that they didn't see enough of a difference in the six clicks so they they made it a four power adjustment and uh, i have some information to share with all you regarding that as well uh, because that is just really really not making it for why I, I bought this gun to begin with um and then i got the optional hug it trout on that so it makes it extremely quiet um, i mounted it with a uh, vortex uh, uh db diamond um what is it, four to 12, uh, one inch scopes. 
And then it has the Huma regulator as well as the uh, regular uh, pressure regulator for you to see exactly what you got in the tank at all times, right? So, um, again, I have some uh, significant uh, issues with this setup and what it exactly does uh, when I do shot strings. So uh, we will go into that into more detail as well. And then um, because this is the U.S. version, I'm sorry, this is not focusing like I thought it would. Um, when you get into the red, anything over 200 is considered uh, uh, red for this. Boy, this is really struggling here. And um, what it really is, is uh, with the U.S. models, you can go up to 240 uh, bar. So even though you're in the red, uh, you are safe um, on the U.S. models because those are allowed to go up to 240 bar. So that's the gun itself. Um, let's get into some uh, shot string testing and uh, show you exactly what the, the gun can do. So there was uh, one more thing that I wanted to add to this uh, that I forgot to uh, mention uh, the first time, which is uh, this gun is not light. So unlike the Brocock Compato or the other uh, Bantam, this thing is a heavyweight. Uh, the total pounds with the scope on, and mind you, I took off the rails that come with this because there's a Picatinny rails here. And then there's a Picatinny rail up here and here that the scope would would mount to to raise everything up. Um, with that all taken off, this gun weighs 8.8 .8 pounds with the scope on. So uh, this is not a lightweight, uh, which is another one of the things that I was hoping I was going to get when I got it. Um, but just keep that in mind if you think that you are going to get a synthetic stock and it's actually going to be lighter than say a Woodstock. I think this thing weighs uh, just as much if not more than if it had been a Woodstock. So that's it. All right, so let's talk about the Huma regulator. Um, when I posted the first uh, string of uh, off of the original gun, um, I had some people uh, write back that, hey, that regulator doesn't look like it's working right. Um, because instead of it being a straight line, I have a declining uh, trend line here on these on this uh, part. I mean, I'm sorry on this gun. So Got the new one in and did another 150 shot string and as you can see uh, I go from a high of like 910 uh, down to a low of 889 and The thing that is most uh, Disconcerting about this is that this rifle came to me set at say 140 bar on the regulator well, the Huma regulator does not seem to act like other regulators. Um, I continue to shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. And the regulator, it, it never went off the regulator. What, what, what I saw was um, as the pressure in the tank decreased, then the regulator just decreased with it. So while I'm shooting, because I shot past the 150 there um, that I, I didn't record, because I just wanted to see will it ever drop off. It just continues to go down, 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 and basically keeps the same type of trend. So even though I'm going down into the 700s, um, it continued to maintain a fairly uh, repeatable um, shot string, but continuing to go downward. And so that to me doesn't make any sense at all because I want to know how many shots can I have on a fill before I have to refill it or before I have to worry about you know where's my pellet gonna hit and the human regulator does not at all do uh, what my FX regulator does when it's off the regulator it's done you see it you know two shots pass three shots pass and you you know that you're no longer at the same velocity and it shows it on the chronograph and so what I'd like to know is does uh, anybody else that has the human regulator either in a brocock or something similar do you see the same issue uh, that I am seeing on this one? Because again, this is the second one now that I have gotten that shows this same issue. So uh, it'd be great if uh, you guys could let me know.
The other big issue that I have with what they changed is this whole generation one to generation two power selector. Um, as you see on the left, my original one came with seven power settings. The new one comes with four. So I took the uh, same ones I used last time, the 8.44s to the 10.3s, and did the average velocity at each one of those powers. And as you can see, the original generation went from 950 down to 535. That is a huge uh, difference in, in velocities, and that was specifically why I wanted this rifle, because when I go out to the farms that I'm allowed to shoot at, there are some shots that I take outside of the, uh, the barns, and then there are shots I take inside the barns, and I need a slower traveling pellet, so I don't have to worry about going through the siding or you know anything else that might happen inside of a barn. With the Gen 2, uh, yeah, that's not getting me where I want to go. Uh, 828 feet per second is still way too hot for me to be shooting inside of a barn that has uh, light tin roofing on it. Um, whereas the Gen 1 would have easily been able to do what I wanted it to do. And so I'm not really sure what Brocock is thinking, but uh, this is a terrible uh, idea. Um, I don't agree with it at all. And if I had known this, I probably wouldn't buy this gun because of the simple fact that I was looking for something that would be able to go from low to high, similar to my Air Arms S410, but was repeatable, and I didn't have to have a chronograph every time to set it. And they basically have totally taken that out of the, out of the picture for us. So, uh, not a bright idea on Brocock's side, and it kind of makes me wonder, because uh, everybody thought that when it came under the uh, stables of Daystate, we would get a better shooting gun or a gun closer to like day state. And this gun does not at all uh, perform to the same uh, expectations that I would have had uh, if it uh, had been a day state. So just want to let everybody know that this is not what I had expected to see when I got my generation two Brocock. All right, so in front of you uh, are two sets of targets that uh, I took uh, with the gun uh, right out of the box. So the one on the left is uh, at low power, and the one on the right is at high power. And these are three-shot groups shot at uh, 20 yards. And I shot uh, 12 different pellets uh, through both sides, the low and the high. And as you can see, this is a pretty consistent air rifle at 20 yards so initial thoughts were like hey this this has some pretty good potential um, to be able to do what I want out at 30 40 and 50 yards so um, this was uh, again uh, what I started out with and then um, I took uh, and pushed it out to 30 yards and was able to then figure out exactly which which pellets I wanted to use for uh, the 40 and 50 yard tests. So you'll see that here uh, coming up shortly. Um, but just wanted to give you an idea of what I was getting at 20 yards, uh, no matter if I was on high power or low power.
Okay, so here are the results of the 40-yard uh, test. Uh, top left corner is the JSB Exacts uh, 8.44s. To the right is uh, uh, QIS, which is a new China pellet that Airguns Arizona, I guess, is going to start stocking. Um, to the bottom of that is uh, Air Arms Diablo Field Heavies, which are like the JSB Exact Heavies, and then uh, JSB Monster Redesigns. And uh, as you can see, uh, results were not too good for the 8.44s. Uh, the QIS, uh, that uh, covers under a quarter, so that one's good. Uh, down here, the Air Arms did really well for 40 yards. It's completely covered. And then the uh, Monster Redesigns also almost completely covered uh, by a quarter. So all in all, good results uh, at 40 yards using the uh, single shot tray. All right, so here are the results of the 50-yard uh, uh, test. Uh, on the left, I have JSB exacts again, 8.44s. Uh, that's a five-shot group. And then uh, the QIS from China, that's a five-shot group. That one does not cover a quarter. A quarter goes over that one. Uh, obviously, on the JSB, it did do a quarter. And on the right is the uh, Air Arms Diablo Field Heavies, and uh, those as well were able to, to be covered by a quarter. So uh, I was hoping for a little bit tighter grouping, but uh, these are the three best ones that shot out of this gun so far. All right, so uh, final thoughts on the Brocock before we uh, wrap this up. Um, wanted to show you what I get uh, from a single shot tray versus the magazines. Um, I have three magazines and um, the gun again comes with one so you may not have this issue but uh, I use three because uh, going into the farms I, I need more than just one magazine. So this is at low power on the left and uh, the one on the right is at high power. It's a five shot uh, group at 30 yards. Um, and then with me using my magazines, uh, this is what I have uh, for my five shots groups. That's uh, at high power, uh, magazine one, magazine two, and magazine three. And then at low power, I have uh, magazine one, uh, magazine two, and uh, magazine three. So that's it. Uh, that's a wrap. So uh, thanks for. Uh, watching and hopefully you found this informative and uh, you'll be able to make a decision on whether or not the Brocock would be the rifle for you. So thanks again.